Hey guys, welcome back. So in the last video, we touched on all the the quick, um, quick and dirty on the value types that Python has, and we we didn't go over all of them, but we went over a lot of the main ones. We left off three very important ones that we're going to get into in the next three videos. Um, the first one we're going to start with is lists, and lists are so important in Python. Uh, they're very flexible things. We're going to create a list um, by using square brackets. That's how you do it in Python. So when we go ahead and we print type of what type is this? Remember, we have to put that in parentheses. And what type is this? Is a just a variable which uh, is a, a of type list. So we'll see that here in a moment. And you'll see that's a of type list in Python. So it's a list object. Um, list objects are just containers. They're boxes. They can hold stuff. And in Python, they can hold whatever the hell you want them to hold. They can hold web pages. They can hold millions of web pages. It could hold um, an entire library, um, and each and each uh, object is a, is a book, which could be some humongous string or something like that. It could be a list that holds lists. So here's a second list, right? Second list is this. So I could say um, in fact, you know, I, it's kind of confusing that I say second list, but I don't really care. So I could have second list inside of the first list. I'm also breaking my naming convention as well, so I should get rid of the camel case. I'm teaching you guys bad Python ways. This is uh, the way you do it in JavaScript or, or C sharp if you were writing a variable like that. But anyway, um, what type of uh, what type is this? Is a is a list that actually contains another list in it. Uh, I didn't spell right. So it's still just a list. So this list contains a list. So a list can contain a bunch of numbers. One, two, three, four, five. Still a list. Now let's go ahead and instead of t um, printing out the type, we'll get rid of the type argument. And we're just simply going to say display the value of this list. So when we do that, you're going to see that we have in the square brackets it's basically just saying hey I only have a value of one you know one list so let's go ahead and say one two three four five now you'll see that's one two three four five and a value of a list so it's actually really cool that you can combine uh, a bunch of integer values and a list which also has a bunch of integer values so in many cases, we could say um, this could be a list of movies. So, like, we'll go ahead with the same thing: Braveheart, uh, Forrest Gump, Superbad, and then the second list is just going to be a bunch of integers or whatever. Um, but this could, you know, be a bunch of movies too. So, Pineapple Express, Friday. you got mail. So I'm getting all kinds of different genres in there. All right, so you can see that it's just a bunch of values now. And it's two lists. And so now what if I just, you know, I could have, I don't even have to have the second list in there if I don't want. So I could have two different lists. So I could say what type of this and then print this. Uh, so we'll print the second list. Um, I'm sorry, secondly, um, the second list will print it down here. And we run this. Oh god damn it. Now you'll see that we have two lists. So anyway, let's go ahead and get rid of um actually I'll get rid of second list. Now what if I wanted to know how many values are inside of what type of list is um what, what you know what type of this is or whatever. what type is this it's a horrible name actually it's not really a horrible name just hard to say um so we have three values in here but what if i had like a million you know it'd be hard to count one two three four five you know what i mean so there is a special function that's built into python which i've been saving for this moment um, that actually tells us the amount of values that a certain list has and that's called the length function and the length function takes the argument 
of whatever list um, that you're passing in. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So you can see it's three. We knew it was three because it was easy to count. But what if, like I said, what if we had 787,000? You know what I mean? That's we could easily have that much, um, and length would easily and quickly return however much that is. So what if I said um, one of the things I do want to mention, which doesn't really deviate away from what we're doing, uh, but let's just say we have you know this X horrible string name, like I was telling you before, but this is a string. I could actually use the length. It doesn't have to be a list. Length can actually return the amount of characters that are inside of a string. So if I run this, 16 gets returned. So that's just kind of a, a side tangent, but also kind of relevant to the subject at hand. So I wanted to make sure I touched on that. And once again, as I start typing, the IntelliSense and Adam is saying, hey, what type is this? Is that what you want? Press tab, and that will automatically fill in. So that's something that um, we'll probably want to make sure I, I re reiterate several times to make sure you're taking advantage of your editor. Now, lists can be um, can be worked uh, with, or they they can be manipulated by using something called an index. And an index is just a number. Basically, um, if I said index zero, it's going to be the first value that's in the list. And the reason why is uh, with programming languages, it's really weird, but um, zero is a number and they actually start counting at zero. So it, it takes a long time to, to get used to, but when you're dealing with lists or strings or whatever, if you give it an index, and let me just give you an example. We're going to say print the value of what is this instead of um, you know, just printing the entire thing. We're actually going to give it an index number. So we're saying print the first value because remember it starts counting at zero. So this is zero, this is one, this is two. So when we run this, it's going to print Braveheart because we said, hey, just print that one. We gave it an index of just one. And if I would have said one, it's going to be Forrest Gump because Forrest one is really two and two you know two is really three because programming languages start counting at zero. Really weird. I know eventually you'll get a, the hang of it. Same can be said for a string. I'm just going to keep this here. We're going to call this test string equals this is an example because these principles don't just apply to list types. They've also apply to strings, but I wanted to save it until we talk about lists um, to actually, you know, discuss these confusing things. So here is the first character gets returned. So let's just give it. I think there's um, I don't know how many characters are in there, but let's give it, you know, six. And what is that going to be? That could even be a space character. We don't know. Yeah, it's S. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. See, six is the the S there. So that is considered an index and and you always give it an index uh, you you do that by using the square bracket and giving it an actual number now what if i wanted to get the last character of this is an example and i don't know how many characters it has say it has 14 million i'm not going to go through and count every single character to say hey give me the 14th million index number nobody's got time for that in Python, there's a, um, a shortcut where you can do negative one. And negative one is going to get the last value. So you can see it's an E. Because what it does is it actually says, hey, let me start from the beginning and go back one. So that's actually how you get the last value. What if I said, hey, I only want, I only want values after the fourth? Well, then what I could do is I could say four and then colon inside my index number and you're gonna see it, it returns everything but this because zero and, and what's weird about <laughs> and, and this is uh, really weird too this is gonna throw you guys through a loop but um, when you do those index values um, it actually counts at one so so when you say four it means one two three four return everything else afterwards that's why you saw when we ran it there's a space so you would think that you would do something like that and that that would you know start counting at at zero and say zero one two three 
and then give you the result, but it actually doesn't. So that is totally confusing, and I know, and it's not my fault. Don't blame me. It's just the way it is. So that is, you know, that like I said, that's how it is. Now, what if I said I only want the next three characters, and you could actually give it at a start and an endpoint, and the start and endpoint is uh, specified by the, um, the the colon. So the same thing could be said, guys, of of um, strings which is what we were just manipulating or lists so let's go ahead and replace the list here and we'll see what we got and you can see it returns Forrest Gump and if I wanted to say give me everything after the first one it'll return both Forrest Gump and super bad and if I said just give me the last element of that list remember how to do it negative one And that's it. Now, one of the things um, you'll notice, which is weird, is that because we're only getting one value, what if I said, "Give me, give me the type of whatever is returned by this index." This is going to return a type string because it's one value, which is a string. Totally weird. Now, what if I said, "That's actually not totally weird," but this is going to be totally weird. Um, what if I say, "Give me." the values between 1 and 2. It's a list. That's something that hell I don't even know how to explain that. That's really weird because it's only returning one value but it's still considered a list because I gave it two index numbers and I didn't give it a specific uh, index because the bottom line is that this could be more than one value. It could be multiple values. If it returns more than one value it's a list, um, generally speaking, but in this case, for some reason, Python still treats this even though only one value comes back. Like if I didn't print type, I'm only going to get one value back. But because it's not a specific index, it returns it as a list and not a, sing a, a simple string, which is, you know, what that that value is. So those are some, you know, that's a weird quirk um, you probably won't run into, um, but keep in mind when you're saying give me you know the start of some list and the end of some list it's going to return it as a new list if you say give me a specific item in that list you know one which in this case is Forrest Gump it's going to return whatever sort of value type it is which is Forrest Gump if I added a new value in here an int you'll see that it's going to return two and if I did, you know, type that value at the one index is now an integer. So hopefully that is not confusing. Um, that is essentially how um, everything can be manipulated is through these these index values. Lists can store an unlimited amount of uh, of information until your computer runs out of memory. And uh, so, I mean, you're going to ask yourself, well, lists, I thought you said lists were really cool and important. Well, they're very flexible in the fact that you can store, you know, lists within lists. Um, you can store different value types like strings or integers or floats or bulls or whatever. And they're infinitely big, meaning that when I'm scraping the web and, I, you know, I'm making money on, you know, scraping data and analyzing data and stuff like that, I'm looking at, millions of web pages or in, in many cases just hundreds or thousands of web pages and I'll say okay let me go ahead and grab all these links that I need to visit well how am I gonna store those links I mean am I gonna write them to a goddamn database or something and, and read them one by one I mean that would be slow it's better to just say okay I just I just figured out a thousand links that I need to visit I'm gonna throw them all into a Python list real quick and then I'm going to work on that list one index value at a time and request each one of those web pages and do some sort of work. So that's why lists are important. It could be there's a thousand documents that I need to process and each one of those documents is a value in that list and I go through the list one value at a time and open up the file, do whatever work needs to be done. So it could be, you know, gaming. Um, 
user clicks on his inventory I need to go through every item in that inventory which could be you know a list of a bunch of different you know item types in a particular game you know a compass a map potions whatever so lists are important guys um they may not seem as cool with with these brief examples as I, as I you know I, I explained it to be but it is certainly important something that you're going to use a ton and um the sooner you guys get on board with that the better so anyway guys thanks for watching the video about the introduction introductions to lists and we'll get into that more in the future all right thanks for watching bye